So the story of the beekeeper is Jason Statham plays a retired beekeeper who has taken up the hobby of beekeeping in his retirement. Now, what is a beekeeper? A beekeeper is somebody that comes in and fixes things when things are broken. So if something isn't working in society or our systems, you have this mysterious organization that can come in and right wrongs. So in setting up the movie, I really wanted to open up Jason to the audience in a way we haven't seen it before. So he actually learned how to keep bees, how to harvest honey, how to open up the hives and, and work with the bees themselves. And what you see on screen is real. And it really kind of grounds him and, and helps add to the mystique of him as this mysterious force of nature that ultimately becomes a force for justice. So in The Beekeeper, Jason represents this clandestine secret organization. And we open up a door, and just a crack, and we, we get to peer through. And you realize, you know, maybe they've been around a really long time, and maybe they've been helping us in keeping civilizations on the right track for a long time. And it's interesting because as you move through the film and, and the lore of the beekeeper is told through the reactions of different people, you, you, you see how powerful the organization is, how respected it is, and how much reach it has into the absolute top levels of government and society. So when the movie opens, make sure you don't miss the credit sequence up front because it actually tells a rather interesting story about beekeeping, beekeepers, and the mythology of their place in societies throughout time. And as the movie unfolds, you, you learn a lot about the beekeepers from people in the government, from people who are very powerful in society. And you have to wonder, how do the beekeepers earn that reputation? But Jason ju does a very good job of showing us how. I have to admit, I was a little bit intimidated working with Jason at first because he's so iconic. He's such a um, the stoic, powerful character. Uh, he, he really is a brand unto himself. And as a director and as someone who's directed action, you know, I always bring my A game to the table. But Jason taught me that there's an A plus game. And when you have somebody who does their own stunts, you don't have to play any camera tricks to hide that. You're not shooting a double and then stuffing shots in of somebody's face. It's, it's seamless and it really grounds the action and it really grounds the choreography and adds a reality that, you know, I'm kind of spoiled now, I think, for working with anyone else. So I, I've been really fortunate in my career. You know, I've worked with Jake Gyllenhaal, Brad Pitt, Will Smith. Um, just a lot of great guys, a lot of amazing actors, uh, Christian Bale, uh, and they're all very different and they're all rightful movie stars. And there's something magic about a movie star. In working with Jason, I learned that this is a guy who does everything himself, who knows stunts, who knows action, who knows choreography, has an encyclopedic knowledge of any punch ever thrown in cinema, it seems like. And to have a collaborator like that, and then actually to be able to connect with him and bond with him. I mean, he's a great guy. Off duty, he's just kind of a funny, quiet, chill person. And you get him on camera, and he's just an action icon. It's, it's, he's a living legend. And it was just a lot of fun to work with him, and I can't wait to do it again. So there's, there's a lot of action in this movie, a lot of action. And the challenge when you have that much action is not being repetitive and, and having places to go with it and keeping it interesting and, and, and fresh for the audience. One of the funnest scenes is, is the truck stop scene where Anaset shows up with her very large gun and lights the place up. Now, it plays great, it didn't feel so great to make it. I was kind of behind the gun on time. I didn't have the prep I wanted. You know, we were just starting out. It was our first action sequence. So we were kind of learning the grammar of the movie as you do. But once I saw that cut together, I was beyond happy. I was over the moon and I knew we were gonna have a special movie at that point. And then it just became about working with Jason, working with Jeremy Marinas, the, the stunt choreographer. Um, and building more and more exciting sequences. Another great sequence is um, 
the SWAT fight outside of Nine Star, where Jason just kind of shows up, feels like this regular guy, and takes down an entire FBI SWAT team himself. And th there's a lot of multiple camera work in there, but there's a lot of long takes. And it is because of Jason's ability to do these stunts himself that makes it feel so grounded and real. I mean, you really feel like this guy can take on a SWAT team. And I, I will say after that scene and we shot it, I was you know, a little more cautious around Jason and try to keep on his good side. And then we have, um, you know, one of the earliest scenes in the movie, uh, earliest action scenes is it takes place in a barn and it's actually where, you know, Adam Clay, Jason's character lives. And some bad guys who are really more street thugs make the mistake of uh, challenging him in, in his home space. And he makes a very creative use of the things in the environment to take them out. Uh, and it doesn't end well for those guys. And I think we like that happening because they actually kind of take out his beehives, which is not cool. So they do have to pay for that. And, and one of the more interesting and funner scenes to shoot was, um, you know, the bad guys, part of their scamming world is this place called Nine Star, which is kind of the, the, the mother hive of the scammers. And Jason goes in there and is being protected by this incredibly capable paramilitary force. And these guys are scary. I mean, they have all this kit on and they have the latest weapons and training and everything. And he does a pretty good job of um, showing them why a beekeeper is to be reckoned with. So part of the fun of, um, of filmmaking, you know, I, I think the best part of it is casting, and that's what I really love is working with actors. And combining you know, very different actors on camera can get you some amazing results. It's like you know, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The magic comes from gifted actors doing amazing things. So Josh Hutcherson plays Derek Danforth, who is I'm just gonna say it, kind of a dumpster fire of a human being. He's, he's a bad guy we love to hate, and, but he's a person and he comes from a childhood that maybe wasn't so great and he didn't get the love he needed. And you know, he, he sort of is acting out in a sense to find his own way and navigate through the world, which doesn't justify what it does. But as I like to say, everyone's the hero of his own movie. And Derek definitely thinks he's the hero of this movie until he's told otherwise by Jason. And Josh built this amazing character and we worked together and collaborated to have this kind of larger than life character who at the same time is very grounded and does come from an honest place. And then you pair him up with a powerhouse, classic traditional actor like Jeremy Irons. And you have this, this clash as Jeremy is trying to wrangle and, and, and herd cats with this wild kid with no boundaries and no empathy. And it's like cleaning up after an elephant or a tornado. And, and you can see Jeremy playing that dilemma of what have I gotten myself into and how do I get myself out?